All right, here's my shitty scene guide with no editing because I'm too busy playing the game. If you have questions or, yeah, if you have questions, just go to my Twitch stream and ask me or maybe ask me on Discord if you really need to know. Uh, I think we'll cover stats, skills, uh, leveling, and then equipment or something like that. So for stats, your stats are really simple. Everything goes into luck. Well, when you make your character, first of all, you want 4 strength, 4 int. That's all that matters. Then you need 25 dex to job advance. And then everything's going to go into luck, except if you need to equip a new claw. Then you equip. Then you need however much dex your claw requires. So my claw requires 110, so my total dex is eventually going to be 110. Then I get some of it from gear. So to find out what your base dex needs to be, just subtract your gear's dex from your claw requirement. And that's going to be your base dex. Um, that's what you're aiming for and your targets basically your usual upgrade route is going to be Meba well 25 for job advance 50 for Meba which I think starts at level 25 but you might not get it at level 25 but you're going to need 50 for that and then at level 50 you're going to go 90 dex and then after that you might go 100 dex at 60 or 110 at 70 more likely 110 at 70 but that's basically how it goes. At level, when I put on my Meba at first, I had plus five decks from my gear, from like a bamboo hat and like top bottom. So I had 45 base plus five equals 50 because that's what Meba requires. And then when I dinged 50 and I upgraded my claw, I had plus 35 from my gear. So I had 55 base. And now I have 33. I need 110, so I have 77 base. Pretty simple. Okay, so for skills, if you're lazy, put points in three snails. Yeah, you'll probably end up SP resetting on the server anyways, so I mean, it's not a big deal if you want to just save some time. Otherwise, you want three nimble feet, three recovery. This is pretty good for speed for early game, and then this is just good healing. Okay, thief skills. If you are funded or you sell like a jump, shoe jump 10 scroll or something, and you got money, you can go lucky, 20, lucky seven, 20 points once you find, get your money. But if you are basically just starting out and poor and shit, just um, start out with a three nimble body because it's required, eight keen eyes to get range, and then after that go eight lucky seven to get some damage if you want it, and then if you're poor, go twenty nimble body, and then after that go lucky seven. If you're not poor, like you found a shoe jump and sold it, and you got like at least a hundred k mesos, uh, then after going three eight. Then you can just go straight 20 and then go come back here and go 20 here. Um, after that, it doesn't really matter. You, you go one point dark sight. Um, and then probably like, I think it's like 12 points disorder. Okay, second, um, second tree job. Start with one point crit throw. First point crit throw is pretty good. Um, if you are pay to winning and you're going to buy pet, pet auto buff, get one point claw booster. Um, and then after that, get 19 Claw Mastery. The Mastery gives you minimum damage, so it's really good. The last point just gives you accuracy, so you don't need that to weigh later. After 19 Mastery, go 30 Crit Throw. After 30 Crit Throw, go 6 Claw Booster if you're not pay to winning and you don't have pet auto buff. Um, after 6 Claw Booster, um, then it doesn't really matter what you go. Usually you're going to go haste. Uh, you can go endure. I don't think endure is that good anymore though because you can just find items to sell to save money. Maxed out, I think this gives you like 40k mesos per hour. This works like anywhere now. Just It's just constant healing and, and mana, which is just mesos per hour. It's kind of a low amount, but I mean, if you just want more money, I guess you can go that. Most of the time, you're just going to go haste to get more movement for... You know, less optimal map, less dense maps and whatnot. Um, rest of your points can go in like drain or uh, get one more claw mastery to finish off claw mastery. Get the last act, and you can put stuff in like drain or disorder. I have max disorder right now. I don't really have a strong opinion on what else. You can even go max endure and just have a couple in drain or something. I'm not super strong opinion on the other choices there. Okay, third job. Uh, so a bunch of different viable skills. You can go Alchemist, Meso Up, Shadow Partner, Avenger, Flash Jump. 
Flash jump is a little sketchy. You gotta kind of know what you're doing with that. And you probably don't even need to max it if you're going flash jump first. It does require five Avengers, so if you want flash jump, you gotta start with five Avenger. Um, but my standard route I'm gonna recommend is just max shadow partner. Um, get at least six points in shadow partner, probably before you get flash jump. Um, and then you can optionally spend six on getting flash jump and then max shadow partner, or you can completely ignore that and just go straight 30 shadow partner immediately. Um, the reason I have four alchemist is because I'm leveling at lichens, just helps smooth out my pot usage properly to, or auto pot usage with Unagi. Um, I leveled with Avenger until like 81. It's solid. Some people say it's shit. It's not. All these things, all these abilities are pretty reasonable to go for. Whether you go Mace Swap, Alchemist, Shadow Partner, Avenger, or maybe even Flash Jump. So it's not super important what you go here. The standard route is just recommend maxing Shadow Partner first, and then probably Mace Swap after that. But you, even after that, you can still pick what you want between these abilities. Um, okay, so leveling route. How do you use this map? Uh, Maple Island. I used to do 1 to 10 Maple Island. Come to Kerning. Do your job advancement, do the quests and from your job NPC to level like 13-ish. You should be after that. Um, your job advancement gives you like 20k mesos and you're supposed to buy your own gear. So go buy a Garnier from the vendor and whatever else if you want. Subi. Um, through Subi Throwing Star. And then at level 13, go to Henesis. And on the left side of Henesis, there's like some stairs up like a treehouse. Jump up to like the top of that and like press up and you'll go to a secret area that leads towards Mush Bomb. The first map has a bunch of orange mushrooms. I highly recommend leveling there for at least until you get one shoe jump scroll. Shoe jump 10 is a valuable scroll, so you can sell that to get your economy started. Uh, you can really stay here at orange mushrooms for pretty much as long as you want to keep making solid money. Um, probably, probably somewhere like 25 you definitely want well not definitely but you probably want to move on but you can move on earlier too you can move on to like pig beach or there's another map to the right of henesis for pig beach if you just get tired of orange mushrooms and you want to mix up you can go just henesis something around one right here and also do slimes um or if you already have lucky seven max you maybe even can do green mushrooms um but there's some blue mushroom map like all blue mushroom map or mostly blue mushroom map somewhere that I haven't checked out that I think is really good for leveling as well. Also, if you somehow have mesos to go to Zapangu and you want to go to Zapangu, the first map or two, I think there's like a mushroom gardener or something in Zapangu that has good mushrooms for leveling on and shit like that. Um, there's like an octopus map in Kerning. I don't think it's that good. Um, there's some like face masks somewhere in Perion. I'm not exactly sure where they are. That people like around like 25 to 30 kind of range maybe i think um you can also do wild boars um and then at like 30 or at 25 you get your mabo right if you if you can afford it and that's when you're stronger and you can go to these like face masks or um whatever else and you also have lucky seven max at that point or a wild land of wild boar land of wild boar is just right side of parry on east east corner street of parry i think just drop down in the first map and there's a gate there you go in. It's really good. Um, that can give you just raw mesos and which will let you uh, plus seven in your meba, which is your primary goal after getting the plus, the meba is to plus seven it. If you have enough money, you could just buy a straight plus seven off the auction house and save some money. Um, and then probably do like face masks or wild boards. Probably face masks are better if I had to guess. Um, till plus seven meba, and then I think once you have plus seven meba, you can just do junior race. Junior race are in Kerning in the subway. It's like the third map or something. Go in a counterclockwise circle. There, it's really good. A lot of mesos per hour from Helmet Dex one hundred, and you probably also want Helmet Dex one hundred yourself. So go like whenever you feel strong enough, or no later than thirty five, go to junior race. Go in a counterclockwise circle. Um, you should be making like 250 or 300k an hour there I think so it's pretty cracked and solid EXP as well you can stay there 
You can stay there until you get seven helmet dex 100s, 14 helmet dex 100s, until you feel rich or until you go insane. Uh, if you go insane before level 40, uh, this game is probably not for you and you should probably just quit now or just have fun with it rather than trying to play optimally. Um, but you can leave, when you do leave there, leave Junior Wraiths, you can, I think you should just go to Orbis Garden of Three Colors. Uh, you go to Alinea to take the ship in the top right, um, and it brings you to Orbis. Um, and then somewhere here, guarded in the three colors. First two platforms here are really good. Okay drop table, not amazing, but not bad. Uh, but really good EXP. And that'll just let you push to 50 as fast as possible, because at 50 is when you start juicing. At level 50, um, somewhere here, where's Golem Temple 4? Here. You go top right of Henesis to this map, and then go one more map to here, and then the bottom middle drop down, there's a door, kind of invisible door sort of thing. Go in there, follow the path all the way to the top of the Golem Temple to Golem Temple 4. It's fully it's full of mixed golems and a little bit of blue mushrooms. Um, this is going to be your best money and solid EXP, probably your best EXP, well, might be your best EXP um, for quite a while. There's... One other map for EXP, but it's only like 5% better or something, and it completely gimps your economy, so I recommend this. Stay at Golems for, I mean, you. it's kind of scuffed how long you can stay at Golems. 50 to 81, really, because uh, you're going to need a lot of money for upgrading your gear and everything. You can leave a little earlier than 81, um, especially if you get lucky with like your scroll drops and scroll usage. Um, and then at like Probably 77 to 82 is when you come, you go down to Orbis Tower, to El Nath, to the right, to wherever the fuck I am here, Wolf Territory 5, and you kill Lycans until you get an Ilby, or until you just give up and you want to get more XP, then you go Deep Looty, probably Death Teddies. Um, so that's the leveling route. Oops. Um... There are some other options that I want to cover. If you want to make big fucking money in like the late 30s to early 40s, you can come down to Orbis Tower, like floor 4 or something, and kill Dark Ladies. They draw bottomware for Dex 100, which I I think they drop them at a high rate. I haven't tested, but I, my theory is that they do. And I think you can get 1 million mesos for each of them, and they drop pretty often, like once an hour or something. So I think if you're farming Dark Ladies, you're making like one mil an hour. It might be hard to move the uh, scrolls, but I feel like there's a lot of people that need them right now, and almost nobody's farming them. Um, uh, if you just want some variety in your life, you can come over, like, over here in the 40s, maybe early 50s. Probably not early 50s, just 40s somewhere. To I think this is Platoon Kronos. Or here for Master Robo. Master Robo drops Yellow Umbrella, and which is a good mage weapon. And uh, Platoon Cronus drops GFA, Glove for Attack 60. That's what the golems, mixed golems and Golem Temple 4 drop. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Any other maps I want to talk about? Uh, oh yeah, the other leveling map from 50 to 80 you want or whatever is Cargos. Um, they're not much better for Sin, but it's like 5% EXP or something for... I don't know, if you're somehow like super rich or funded or whatever, or you just don't give a fuck, you just want the EXP, I highly don't recommend... I highly rec recommend not ignoring your economy, so I wouldn't recommend going to Cargos, but that that's the map. It's all the way like super deep in Sleepywood, like somewhere over here. Or right here, no here, here it is. Um, what other options are there? I mean, there's a lot of viable maps. I mean, I'm like kind of skipping a bunch of stuff. There's also fire boards if you just really just want some kind of mix up in your late 30s or 40s. But I think junior race are going to be way, way more money than fire boards. Mm. There's no slime tree in case you thought there's a slime tree. The slime tree is like scuffed now in the rework. These are all the reworked maps, reworked drop tables, that kind of stuff. 
So if you're used to the old shit, it, it'll feel a little weird, but there's a lot of really good maps now. Um, is there any other crazy money-making spots I want to cover? Uh, Tauros. So I actually did Tauros um, in Sleepywood. I was poor and I wanted I wanted to upgrade my claw to Scarab at like 74 to 81 or something. So I did Soros from 74 to 81. Got myself some Scarabs, scrolled them. So I upgraded my claw that way without having to pay an arm and a leg for the few different Scarabs that were on the auction house. I don't know if I'd recommend doing Tauros, but it's an option if you're poor. I was poor because I did cargos like an idiot. Um, okay, so gear. Um, I did cover, you're going to go Meba and then Slain and then whatever your best claw is after that. Um, you can kind of think as 5 luck as one weapon attack if you want to compare like a Slain to a Gigantic to a Scarab. So if I compare this to a Slain, I think it's 20 decks less. So subtract 4 weapon attack from this. So this is equivalent to a 41 Slain, which is a pretty crazy Slain. So, you know, decent chance you'll upgrade off Slain or Gigantic to a Scarab. Um, but if you do find a crazy slain, crazy gigantic, you can use those over scarab. Um, your, 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 so your claw route's going to be Meba, then slain, and then probably scarab, but maybe gigantic. Um, stars, uh, somewhere probably in your f early 50s or late 40s, maybe even earlier than that, you're going to want to upgrade to mock bees. Stars aren't going to drop in this game, so don't try to target farm stars. Just buy them off the auction house. Get a Mach B when you can afford it, and then probably in your 70s, get a Toby. It's probably my upgrade, my recommended upgrade route. Um, earring doesn't fucking matter, just whatever. Um, let's see. So early levels. Early levels, you want to hit a shoe jump 10 uh, or get good squishy shoes. This is kind of mediocre squishy shoes and then I had a shoe jump 10 on it just want at least three stats on your boots I would say um, when you hit like 25 I think from the vendor you can buy a top bottom that gives you like three stats and two decks and then you can get a bamboo hat from kpq oh yeah you should get kpq from like 28 to uh I don't know 29 or something to get a kpq or bamboo hat whatever you need to get a bamboo hat and if you want you can keep going for squishy shoes but you really don't need to it's up to you if you like kpq or not you can keep going to 30 really or 31 um so vendor top bottom at like 25 with meba to get your little bit of bonus stacks and a shoe jumps here maybe bamboo here um and then after meba and that stuff next you get you get an avenger this is a 35 item. You're gonna try to hit a dex overall 10 on this in the first like couple slots, maybe two or three slots. And then 100% vendor scrolls. Oh yeah, you want 100% your Meba. When you get a Meba, go to the vendor and like, it's like the Kerning Swamp, just the middle pipe, go a few maps over and there's a vendor there that sells claw attack hundreds and overall dex hundreds. Once you hit an overall dex 10 on an Avenger, hit it with hundreds and you'll end up with something along the lines of this. This is kind of on the higher side. But you should be able to get at least, I think, 16 stats. Um, after Avenger, you want to Helmet Dex 100 your Bamboo Hat to get a 10 stat Bamboo. Um, that comes from the Junior Wraiths I was explaining. Uh, after that, you want to 100 your Cape, probably. Get a Cape from like your one of your quests, whether it's Icarus or Old Raggedy or just something on the Auction House. I could say Auction House Capes are cheap now. Uh, old Raggedy is probably your best choice for a while, but it looks fucking stupid, so, I mean, just, whatever. Get a cape, hit it with helmet, 100, dex 100s, um, and then at 50, you're gonna get a slain, um, find, like, a solid slain, hit it with 60s, or just buy the one that's scrolled already. Get a slain, that's good. After slain, you're gonna go golems, right? And golems are gonna be big fucking money, big fucking GFA, so you, you can either buy a glove yourself or scroll it yourself. Personally, I recommend scrolling it yourself, but I mean, it could take a while. It took me like 17 GFAs to just hit an 8. Um, and then after you're happy with your glove, I recommend 8 or 10 attack. Then get um, a Toby. After Toby, 
hit a 10% on an earring, pretty easy, pretty cheap. Um, yeah, and then there's more upgrades after that. Upgrades after that, you can get an identity maybe. You can get a top bottom of like Chinas. I have like some Chinas here. There's some other options like uh, like these things can roll like seven stat top and then you can scroll your top bottom or you could just go for a better Avenger. The better Avenger is a lot simpler than finding these top bottom because you need like, you need scrolls that are not very common. So a lot of people just go Avenger because um, you just have to keep hitting it with overall dex tens until you get crazy stats. Personally, I'm going top bottom. And then upgrade cape to like 10 dex or something with cape 60s. Try to get a six luck earring or higher um, or seven luck with hundreds. Um, you can get snowshoes with more decks and then like a uh, better attack glove or something like that. And I think those are like most of your upgrades or something. Uh, oh, and there's an eye accessory you can get from LPQ if you want to do LPQ. Um, yeah, I think that's what else do I want to talk about on here. Mm, Snowflake. Oh yeah, somewhere in, as soon as basically you have good money, like a junior race, probably you just want to be popping a snowflake on cooldown. Basically, it's kind of broken. You, it's like it costs four hundred twenty dollars a month if you're playing fourteen hours a day, so it's really fucking expensive. Each one is like fifteen cents, but you can buy them on the auction house from Wales for a reasonable amount of mesos. Um, we uh, assassins scale really well with weapon attacks, so this does a lot for us. Um, make sure. If you're not using Snowflake, you're at least using Warrior Potion from level 25 or 30 onwards, at least. Um, there's no, like, potion lockout in this game, so you can just use blue, blue potions to save money. That's why I have so many blue potions in here. Um, I have some backup potions if I run out or something and I really need potions still. I like white potions. Um, I also have orange potions. And then when you get to Tauros or Lycan, I recommend Unagi for the auto pot. Um, the pet you should buy when you're at Junior Race, making a bunch of money, I forgot to say that. Um, pet off the auction house, get some inventory space off the auction house from blue book bags, get some defense charms off the auction house. Uh, there's probably some other cash shop items, or VIP teleport rocks, get some of those off the auction house. Or, or direct from play, direct from whales. Um, or direct from your wallet if you are the whale. I don't really judge people for whaling in this game. I mean, it's not like this is a competitive or PvP game, so if you want to whale, go ahead and whale. Who fucking cares? Um, uh, if you're poor for some reason, like in your... I don't know. You could just go junior race if you're poor now. I was going to say, you could do the Sleepy Wood quests for potions. I don't really think that's worth it now, though, with how good junior race is. Um... Let me just check if there's anything else in the cash shop you need. Um, yeah, pet auto skill. This is really good, but you can't trade it, so um, you have to buy it yourself if you want it. Mm, yeah, these are the 20 weapon attacks, the snowflake here. This is teleport rocks. This is how you move around the game because the boats are fucking slow and these are reasonably priced. Um... Defense Charm saves you from dying. AP resets in this game, you need one, two, or three on your job advancement, save for SP reset. And it resets everything. Also, there's no HP washing. Um, so it's really easy to respec in this game. These are not too bad considering how impactful respecking is. This is how you get your inventory space. Uh, and then pet is how you auto loot shit. Um, and auto pot. And then once you get your pet, you can fucking click these, put a, put a thing here, click them to adjust. And then I recommend adjusting these pretty often. Um, the mana you don't need to change too often, but depending on what you're doing and what pots you're using, adjusting this to the correct number is going to be important. Mm, yeah, there's my sin guide.